Good morning. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance, and as always, we appreciate you joining us. In the boat today, we have a legitimate, sure enough, bass pro, a 20-year professional, Mr. Brent Chapman. Brent. Hi, Chad. Great to have us. Now, we came out here to eastern Kansas, your home area, mm -hmm. but you've never been to this lake. Never been. Uh, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time in this state, grew up here, but uh, this is a brand new lake, and what a great opportunity for me to come and, and see what's you know right here in my backyard. Well, it's really a great opportunity for you guys and for me to get to learn some stuff because because Brent hasn't been here, it's going to we're going to see how fast we can put this lake together. How fast can we figure out how he catches fish and uh, and figures the pattern out and makes himself consistent. So it should be a really good show. Looking forward to some traditional Kansas bassing in the heavy cover. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Berkeley, catch more fish. Abu Garcia, for life. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, spend more time on the water. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. So based on uh, season, like we're starting at the dam because that's where the ramp is. Mm -hmm. But as a general rule, what's your preference for, uh, you know, we're here in August. Yeah. Do you generally, I mean, we've got a pretty classic. That, that's what I that's what I like about a new lake. If I can go to a new lake that's small, you right. can fish it fairly quick. But being that we're right here at the dam, I figure well, let's try it. But you know, typically, your better action is going to come on your flats. You know, up in those areas where we've got you know the, the bigger flats, which I'm sure are probably you know halfway up the lake. But sure, being that it's early here, it doesn't take a lot of time to uh, huh. try this little area here. But man, there's got to be one in that tree. Wouldn't you think? Yeah. Uh, now it seems like whenever we've been to Kansas Lakes, it's been a matter of trying to decipher <laughs> what type of tree yeah. that you need. Whether well, you but you know, and that and that's the thing. A lot of times, the biggest trees are the ones that will hold the biggest fish. Sure. You know, they provide the most shade, and typically, those bigger trees are around some type of contour break. But you know, and, and another thing to, to look at on a body of water like this, it can be overwhelming when you look at all the timber. But if you can ever find an isolated piece of timber, mm. which right, right up here is the perfect sure, example. A little patch of it. Instead of trying to pick apart this giant massive area, you know, go to this one little isolated patch that's kind of by itself. And you know, that's usually where a lot of those good fish will be. And as with any of our shows, guys, we're gonna mix it up until we figure out what they want, and then we'll put a pattern together. I'm gonna and go from there. Put it right in the sweet spot so they don't have to go too far. There. Bite. There he is. There that you one. go. We got that one. Get out of there. Real big one, but it's a start. Yeah, you got us on the board right off the bat, guys. And and that did not. Now that's a nice keeper right off the bat. Now actually, in this pond, it's not a nice keeper, but in most tournaments you fish, that'd be a good start. Yeah, a lot it. of our tournaments it would be in Kansas. I believe this like uh, actually has a 21 inch length limit. But for those that, that are out to catch and release. You know, it's still a fun fish. There you go, and you got them on the jigging pig. Yep. Oh yeah, my yeah. my favorite, especially. <laughs> go figure. Around, around the timber like this, but just like I was saying, you know, a perfectly you know little isolated patch here. Uh, you know, he was there, and I'm sure he's got some buddies that live there as well. And you just put it out. You said put it right in his face. Don't mm -hmm. make him have to yep. move for it. Absolutely. Ten seconds later, set the hook on it. Fish right here. Didn't take long. You no. switch up and get one too. First drop. Yours yep. is better fish, I think. First drop on the jigging pig. It's acting like a small one. Yeah. Get up in here. We'll That's take nice that one. It look, looks a lot like what you just caught there, Brent. I, uh, yeah. Now, I'm not stupid, folks. If you got a legitimate, straight up, sure enough pro in the boat and he throws the jigging pig three times and gets one, then I'm going to grab mine. Mine's got the little There's one, two. 
There we got us a double and put that one back. Woo, pretty ah. fish right here. Let him get his out of trees there. Nice. Thank goodness for 25 pound line and you're using braid. <laughs> there you go. Now, it gets something to do with the drop bait right now, Brent, because we got a couple of somewhat different but similar uh, drop baits. We got mine yeah. tied in straight yep. braid. And that's not bad, guys. We've been fishing all of about five minutes. Yep. And uh, first isolated cover piece we come to, like you mentioned, and right off the bat, we're bit. So, a couple lessons, uh, quick quick thing. We always talk about vertical versus horizontal presentations. We made a bunch of horizontal presentations, didn't do any good. Yep. A couple of vertical ones, and we're bit right off the bat. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that. These fish are obviously tight to the cover in here, and yeah, we could probably have thrown a topwater around here, but why do that when we can pitch it right if, in their if, head if and be using right. braid or 25 pound fluorocarbon and yank them and out of there. And get them out of there, it's a fun way to do it. I noticed you've got a football jig on there, yep. and see, typically a football jig, I'm gonna throw it on the rocks. Yeah, and, like I, and that's, you know, like the rocks along here is where I would fish it, but, you know, for flipping and pitching, you know. Come on. There you go. There we go. There we go. All right. Come on up in here, and guys. When you got that 65-pound braid like that, you can swing them. But even these uh, old giants like this one right here. Now, obviously, that's not what we're looking for, but uh, we're getting an early start, and we'll work out a depth range that we need. And so far, everybody's been uh, been bit. What? So it's about seven foot right there, seven, seven and a half foot. Mm -hmm. So we'll focus on the depth range, and uh, as we move around the lake, and see how much difference that makes. Couple minutes into our day, figured a couple things out quick. Looking for depth ranges now. What are you? Are you reading the terrain around us? How are you breaking down a reservoir situation? Well, you know, this time of year it gets kind of the fish kind of change up. Everybody thinks they'd be real deep, but from what I've learned, fish tend to head shallow in August. I know that seems, you know, counterintuitive, but sure. uh, they like to go shallow. They like to get on flats. I mean, if you look along this shoreline, this looks beautiful, but it's rocky and it's fairly steep. You know, this is probably a really good pre, you know, springtime spot. I'm looking for the big flats, and I can just see as we're heading up here, if you look at this terrain, it tends to flatten out up here. You know, we probably focus on that five to 10 foot range out on those flats. You know, that's where the shad are gonna be, and of course, that's sure. where the bass are gonna be. Well, that makes sense, and we've seen enough activity from the shad already to get a pretty good idea of that. Absolutely. So, as you're going along here choosing this, you got some fairly heavy weights, and it really doesn't have anything to do with the depth of the water so much as it has to do with the fall rate of your bait. Mm -hmm. Is that your whole, you're just trying to trigger bites yeah, more I mean, that way? Yeah, I mean, the fish this time of year, I mean, the only time I ever fish something really slow is when fish are very lethargic. This time of year, I mean, people may think they're lethargic, but, you know, they're in a feeding mode, so if, they, if they're going to feed after something, they're going to get it. You know, you can't fish something too fast, and then, you always hear a lot of us talk about reaction strikes. Right. When something, when I throw it into to the middle of a tree and if it's falling real, real slow, it gives those fish a long time to look at it. And, and usually when they have a lot of time to look at it, it's enough time for them to say, yeah, that doesn't look so tasty. Oh man, what a throw. Now right there, guys, we preach accuracy and line control all the time. And I don't know if the camera caught that, but he just threw that bait up and over a couple of limbs and up into the back where that fish just bit effortlessly without thinking anything about it and got it back, which is important as well. That, especially on a lake like that is so crucial when you've got this, this cover like this, I mean, you've got to put it in there where the fish are. And if you're not putting it in there, a lot of times you won't catch them. Right. And they ain't going to come out to get it. And then the other trick is once you get them hooked is getting them out of there. Yeah. You know? and, that, and that's another thing. A lot of times people won't use heavy enough line. I've got 25 pound fluorocarbon on here, so if one bites, you know, you can at least have a, you know, good opportunity of getting them out of there. Right. There we go. <sighs> There's a better fish. There we go. There's a good fish right there. You got him up in here. There you go. Not a giant, but uh, for this lake, I mean, it's been a, a better quality fish. Yeah, that's He's probably our good. biggest of the day so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of anyway. Nice, yeah, exactly. there you go. So, but you know, I mean, we're, we're catching some fish. Well, and, and, and the thing is, every fish teaches you how to catch the next one. Absolutely. Right? I mean, that's, yep. that's one thing is, is the, as we go through the day, on any given day on Fishful Think, we're always telling you guys to work out a pattern, mm -hmm. where to throw, what to throw, how to work it. You know, until your conditions change, the more details you can put together so you can duplicate them, the better. And that's how you go about it, I'm sure. Oh, I, absolutely. I mean, it's amazing. We went probably an hour and a half without a bite, and we get right up here where we're back into some shallower water like we did earlier, yep. and we start getting bit. And now it's just a matter of, dissecting all this timber and these fish could literally be anywhere in here and you just got to hit it all. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by 
Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. I like the looks of that shady stuff over there. Oh, there's a fish. Fish right here. And he's down in yep. there. Gonna come out. There's why you use heavy go. line. There you go. Nice hook set. And that one looks remarkably like the last one. I think we're starting to figure out a depth range now. It looks like mm -hmm. about seven or eight foot. And that, that boat's yep. at nine and a half. Nice. Yeah, so you got that trocar buried. He'll never yeah, come off of there. That, that's, can, the, that's the way you like every fish to get yeah, hooked, right those, through the cheek. And, yeah, they never come off when you hook them that way. That's a good catch right there. And again, not in a hurry on the hook set. No. Nope. You know, he was out a little bit deeper. How deep we flashing? Eight here? foot, though. Oh, OK. So up. it's just the bottom's flattened out a little bit for yeah. us. Nice catch. Putting them together. Now, with a limit like 21 inches on this lake, they're not going to allow any harvest for a while. And you think that's just to get this lake going? Yeah, since a, tr it's a, new a trophy lake? lake, you know, that, that probably, you know, in my opinion, if, if you're going to get that. Fish right big, here. Got him. Look at that. We get up here shallow and. Come out of there. There we go. <laughs> All right. Now you can tell when you get, uh, you get Brent here, he's a little more used to them, dealing with those long pitches and. <laughs> now, see, his was hooked in the corner of the mouth, and mine's hooked barely on the tip of the snout right there. <laughs> Either way, it got in the boat, but I'm going to lose a higher boat. percentage of those than he's going to. So for the last three days of that tournament, I fished you on the first day mm -hmm. of a four-day tournament. So for the last three days, did you do the same kind of thing, basically go get all your fish with your crankbait? And I'd, then... go, I'd go catch a limit early on the, on the crankbait, and then, then I'd pick up that swim bait and usually cull. You know, if I could cull everything out, it was going to be an awesome day. If I culled, you know, three or four out, there's a, oh, he, he, he's got it. There you go. <laughs> he had it around a little stick. There you go. Nice. You had a debate on that one. That's so, nice. So we, we were wondering if this lake had a lot of fish in it. It's definitely got a lot of fish in it. It's just they're not easy to get to. But you know, I mean, you know, that's not a giant bass, but a lot of times it's just a matter of getting out here and getting the bites, you know, and I mean, this is a blast. Oh, absolutely. Oh, got it, look at that. Oh. <laughs> it hit the water and I twisted it one time and he didn't really explode on it, but man, it just disappeared. That's awesome, great catch. <laughs> that's cool. I got mine back, I nice. I think he wanted that frog. Nice catch. Now, uh, you just said, 10 seconds ago, guys, or 15 seconds ago. Might have to switch up to a frog. I thought that fish was bigger than that, but it was still fun. Oh, and I'm messing with the tangle, and you got that? That ain't love. Good work. Nice. This feels like a better nice one. one, too. There we go. That's There's why you use 25 fish. pound line. And I tell you what, folks, you gave that one all of it and then some. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Not, a, not a bad one. I mean, he's not a giant. But... He's headed the right direction. Good yeah. work, man. Now, guys, one of the things that I'm seeing here a lot, and I and I told camera guy this before we got here, I said, you're going to be in for, I got that <laughs> there one. There you go. There's a good one. I'm like, you're going to be in for a show on watching this guy pitch his baits around. And, and when I fished with you, you were cranking, but I could tell by the way you were throwing that crankbait around that you were going to be pretty serious with the flipping stick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, there's no doubt. I mean, the, the flipping stick is, is the key setup on this place just because of, you know, the type of cover you got to get in. You know, there's probably certain days, you know, you can get them to chase the spinner bait or buzz bait. We probably could today, but it's just not, it's too hard not to pitch into every cover piece of cover here because it's just so perfect. Well, you got to admit, the end of a day when your ribs are sore right mm -hmm. here from burying that flipping stick over and Absolutely. over again, you had a good day fishing. <laughs> there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Well, one of the things I think about is nice about the frog is you can throw it anywhere. There, there's times like today, you know, you're not going to get near as many bites on that as, as I will on this jig. Right. But, you know, you may only get a bite an hour on it, but they could all be four pounders. Right. It's right. just hard for me to do that when you can just when do I that. Can, <laughs> when I can throw to every tree, you know, about every other tree and yeah. potentially get a bite. Yeah, that's hard to argue with. Uh, so. Those hook sets are hard to argue with. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Yeah, look at this, guys. 
<laughs> there you go, nice. See, the one will bite the square bill crankbait. Now, one thing I'll tell you about the way he's fishing, that's a nice one too. Yeah. One thing I'll tell you guys about the way he's fishing this, he picked this square bill up and threw it the first time, and he's reeling it just dang near as fast as you can go. I mean, the bait's running full speed and then some mm -hmm. coming through the water. And with as big as that bait is and as buoyant as it is, it just ricochets off of everything oh, yeah. as it yeah, comes Yeah, that's, that's what a square bill is so key is that if you get it going fast enough, that bill will protect those hooks and it likes to deflect off of stuff. And that's what creates those uh, reaction strikes that are so key on a square bill like that. Man, oh man, he is burning this bait, guys. We'll see if we can get a quick shot of him burning this thing. But I ain't lying, that bait is running full speed and then some much faster than I've seen pretty much anyone working shallow crankbait before. Yeah, so. you know, in the summer like this, it's hot. You know, the fish are lethargic. If they're hungry, they're gonna catch it. But if they're not, they want it coming by fast. They don't want to look at it real long. I mean, you want them to react Just at it. And that's it what, by, that's yeah. what they're doing. And if you watch this guy working this bait, you can see how fast he's ricocheting off those trees and then burning it back to the boat. That's exactly how he's working it. And you see, boom, ricochet off that stump and then keep going. Now, I don't know, these guys don't have coastas. Like, we need to get coasted to make a camera yeah. lens. But, uh, but you know, with our lenses on, you can see it. Now it'll hang a little bit just like that and then he reels it off. But uh, pretty impressive watching him work that. Thing. Yeah, the key, you know, the key is, is, uh, you know, using that heavy line too. You know, I've got it on 20 pound fluorocarbon. That, that heavy line tends to keep it buoyant, keep it up there, and plus when it when it hangs up, you know, you can pop it, you can off, pop it off of there and it pull going. it loose uh, like you need to. Yeah, that's impressive. Yep, sure is, that. he caught a brown one at the wrong end of the lake. They're at the dam, the book told yeah. me they're at the dam, dude. Yeah, uh, the book said they're, supposed, a, to be they're the supposed to be little too. That's a nice small fish. mouth right there, buddy. Huh. Nice work, and that's now that's really no shocker to me because that's the fastest bait we've been throwing all day. That's a really pretty, pretty fish. small mouth, especially yes, for is. Kansas. You know, 10 years ago, yeah. 15 years ago, we didn't have small mouth in this state, so that's a pretty one right Kansas there. Kansas really done a good job with uh, introducing small mouth into our lake, but doesn't really look much like a small no. mouth. Uh, <laughs> it's looking around like cover yeah. here. Well, there is a rock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's there a better one. A better one there. Yep. There we go. And then we'll swing them up in here. There we go. But they still eat my smash tube, so I'm gonna kill throw my smash tube. That's another one that wasn't gonna come off. Thanks for letting me buy that trocar, man. It's working oh, yeah, pretty those good trocars, right there. Uh, they don't get off there the trocars. Like I've said before, guys, it's not a hook I've thrown a lot of, but I've been throwing it recently, and uh, and it's been working real good for us so far. So another classic Kansas largemouth. But, uh, you know, and he's still throwing back and forth the frog, the square bill, and as we do in a lot of episodes of Fishful Tinker, it's not necessarily about a magic bait. It's more about whatever bait fits the spot you're on. Oh, and there's one yeah, on the frog. That one. Nice. <laughs> Turned to look at you, and yeah. I just heard him. That's yeah, good fun right there. Let me get up and out of the way. Crush That's it. a pretty one there. That almost looks like Florida strain yeah, fish. Yeah, that looks like a Florida fish. There. Yeah, they got that real dark color to them. Another thing I've noticed after watching you fish for a couple days now has been your hook setting is very, very crisp and precise and in the right direction. That's how, that's how you like them to eat it. Oh, Literally nice. One Let's get a close-up of that. Come here and look at this, guys. You got to see this. That's, that's how you like a bass to eat a bait. <laughs> he is not coming off. In fact, you might be a while getting that one off of there. Yeah, he, uh, that is how, that's how you like to hook them for sure. Nice. Good catch. Now if the five pounders would only do that. Ooh, nice, nice, submerged lay down. Now what made you throw? Oh no. I was gonna ask you what made you throw to a submerged lay down out off the bank? Well that's you know that's an <laughs> isol the isolated of piece day. of cover, you know, and that was our best fish mm -hmm. of the day by far. Nice. But you know that you have this whole tree row here, but then you got this one isolated piece of cover there that uh, right on the end of it. You know, when, whenever you get to an isolated piece of cover, you've got to be ready for a good one and <laughs> If you absolutely positively have to catch a bass, you've got what's your most confident bait that day in and day out, if you had to catch a produce a fish anywhere in the country. Just any, any size fish or? Yeah, you gotta produce a, 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 let's say a legal keeper bass anywhere in the country. Right. You got one very specific rig. Probably my half, half, a half ounce version of the black and blue jig I've been throwing. A half ounce version of a black like and I blue said, jig. Like I said, I've thrown it all around the country. It works in the heat of the summer. It, it works in the, uh, you know, dead of winter. I can swim it. I can fish. You know, I can fish it really slow. I can fish it fast. So it's really a, 
a, a versatile bait. You got that one. That looks like a good one or he got you one or the other. Nope, no, that's a good one. You got him in. It's a good one. Nice. There you go. The there you go. I'm a big one. <laughs> Hold that No, That's a pretty one there. Nice fish. Nice fish. Nice that's better a... fish. So there you have it, guys. Our day on the lake that we've never been to yep. with a legitimate bass pro right here and one of the best in the game right now, Brent Chapman. We had a fun day. If you were coming tomorrow, what would you do different? You know, it was. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we didn't catch any real giants, but, uh, you know, we caught a lot of fish. Uh, you know, our, our goal is always to try to catch some bigger fish and, and all that. So, you know, I think for me tomorrow, I, I'd probably have to throw some topwater more. You know, we had some really good bites on frogs. Yep. Might have to break out some, some deeper diving crankbaits to see if these fish maybe aren't suspended out in these trees. But it's also going to be hard for me to keep a flipping stick out <laughs> of my hand as well. So. Well, a big part of fishing is having a good time. And you probably heard us harping on it a bunch of times today. It's really fun to pitch that jig or pitch that Texas rig into heavy wood cover and feel those bites and get the big hook set. We did catch a ton of fish, oh, absolutely. caught some respectable fish never having been here. Hopefully you guys figured out a few things about it. it you know, basically the fundamentals are going to apply whether you're in eastern Kansas or western Utah. It's not really relevant if the fundamentals are going to apply there. Accuracy casting, line control, watching your line, balance tackle, all that stuff adds up no matter where you're fishing. You got fans. If a guy wants to be a fan of Brent Chapman, they want to pull for you, where's the best place for him to get involved with well, everything you're doing? Of course, Facebook, but uh, you can check check out my website at brentchapmanfishing.com and you can find the links for Facebook there and everything. So. You know, check out my website, BrentChapmanFishing.com. And of course, we link through there as well from Fishful Thinker. So Brent, we really appreciate you taking Thank the time. Thank you very much, Chad. I want to wish you best of luck in whatever happens at Oneida as well. Absolutely. Coming up, guys, this guy's playing for all the marbles. Four days for all the glory. We wish you the best of luck. And I think there's a lot of fans in the West that uh, watch our show that are pulling for you as well. So awesome. appreciate you taking time out of your day to take Thank us you. to your lake on Kansas. You guys, we appreciate you watching as always, and uh, tune in on the 25th of August, I think, to see how Brent does there. It'll be the third day of the competition, but in the meantime, tune in every Saturday here on Altitude Sports and Entertainment Channel. We appreciate you watching Fishful Thinker, and we'll see you next week. Got mine hung up right off the bat. Really? How did I do that? Got him. All right, that looks like a good one. Oh, Andy that's better. came ah. off. Are you kidding? That was our best fish of the day. How are you kidding me? That was a bite right there. Oh, look at that, he got my thing too. I just put that on. How about that for an awesome hook set. Oh, what happened? That was almost a double. I didn't see what happened there. Yeah, I didn't even hook, set, set the hook on mine. Well, that's okay because you got away with it because I did set the hook and missed. Nice, nice. There you go. Hold it. Oh. oh.